Down to Continental and I'll see the house. The house will be right here. It ain't there. Lady across the street. She said, Ain't you boom? Yeah. I know your sister. Where they at? She said, They moved over on over on on Sheridan. But she ain't quite sure. She thinks it's between uh Kirchable and Mac. So I goes over that way looking for my family. I'm walking up and down the street for hours. Nighttime come, I'm tired. So I go downtown and sleeping at the bus stop. One of the girls that was hooking down there see me down there sleeping all the time. She had, she invited me back to her place. I get there to her place and I go to sleep. All of a sudden I hear a thump, 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 thump. I looked up. Some guy beating the hell out of her. So I go over there and push him away from her. He backhanded me. Boom. Pull my knife out. I better cut his ass. She jumps in front. No, no, don't, don't, don't. He just, he just hit me and he be beating you up. Boy, I cut. He pulled out his knife. We're going to be some cutting motherfuckers up in here. <laughs> he tell her, you get rid of that boy. What the hell you doing with that kid in here? So... He leaves. The girl come over there and said, thank you for what you was trying to do, but you can't do that. That's my pimp. Pimp? Yeah, I give him my money. I said, wait, you go out there and you sell your body. You come back and you give him the money. Make that make sense to me. She said, that's just how it is. You know, pimps and hoes. I said, I don't know nothing about it. I don't want to be involved with it. So I leave. I go back to the bus stop. I'm sitting out there in the Grand Circus bus stop, just sitting there sleeping, going and all. She came and she said that he was looking for me. <coughs> By that time, I, me and my friend met up again. So he looking for me, okay. So I go down there to her place and I'm hiding in the bushes, waiting for him to show up. He shows up, my boy, you know, he got guns. He gives me one. He got one. I said, stay right here. I said, what you gonna do? We both can do him. I want him. So I walks up there to him and he put his hand in his pocket. I said, I heard you looking for me. Said, yeah. So what's up? He said, what's up with you? I said, well, I'm talking to a dead man. He said, what you say? Boom. Come on, man. Come through that we picked him and throw him in the garbage can. And uh, I think the next day somebody noticed the body and then somebody threw him in the garbage can. The girl was like, what happened? Someone, it's said one of these pimps must have killed them. Of course, I wasn't nowhere around. I'm back at the bus stop. So she came up there and got me. She said, somebody killed him, somebody killed him. Kill who? Uh, my man, I'm saying, well, he ain't your man no more. Now you keep keep all your money. She stopped and looked at me. I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about, but this is what I'm going to do for you. You don't need no pimp to protect you. I keep a lookout for you. Me and Dyer. So we, every night we out there watching. Then when she made her money, she come over there and give it to me. She said, you just hold it. Why are you giving it to me? This your money. Just hold on to it. I held on to it. My pocket was getting so fat. I'm like, shit. So when we get back to her place, I'm taking out the money to get to her. She stacks it all up and count it. And she said, how much you want? I didn't make that money. She said, yeah, but you was watching me, protecting me and so forth. I said, yeah, I ain't going to let nobody do nothing to you. She cut it 75 for me and 25 for her. I'm like, she said, this more money than, than you like that punk was giving me. Like, Damn, Damn, you giving me that much? So, so, so we took it. Then she went and told the other girls. Other girls start talking about it. Skinny, skinny the pimp. His girl really wanted to leave him because he was <laughs> just a jackass. So they leave him and come to me and said, uh, can we work with you? We choosing you. I started learning 
the motherfucking dialect to the pimping game and so forth. I said, I ain't no pimp. They said, yeah, we know that. We just want you to protect us from the other pimps. So that ain't no problem. They better not put their hands on you. My mama have always taught us, you don't hit no woman. And boy, if you see somebody hitting a woman, step in and beat the hell out of them. I said, okay, ma. Because I did that once. We were going down Mac. And uh guy slapped this woman. I got out, parked the car in the middle of the street. Got out, walked over there, grabbed him from the back of his shirt and twisted him around. And I hit him in the mouth. Bam! How you like it? Man, what you think you doing? Boom! <clears throat> What's it like I'm doing? And a couple of times, girlfriend come over here. You beating up my man. Stop it. I said, he didn't beat you. I know, but you're going to make it worse because he really going to beat me now. Said, no, he won't. I looked over at the car and I see my mother brother looking, so I turned sideways and put the gun in his mouth. Click. You want to live or die? Now, if you ever hit her again and I find out about it, I'm going to kill you. Ask the screed about me. Put the gun back in my pocket and I leave. Within like a couple hours. Got his name, but he came down because he knew my sister. He said, they out there asking questions about you, man. I said, what you mean? They asking about who you is and why you doing this and that for deep horse. Oh, and what you tell them? Man, you don't want to mess with Boom. Boom carries knives, <laughs> gun, whatever. If you mess with him, you better be ready to kill him or die. So the word get around and people start leaving me alone. They went, like, I ain't fucking with that boy. That boy crazy. So, of course, I never heard anything back back about that guy doing anything. But word gets around. My mama talking about, why is that discreet talking about Boom is out there doing things to people? What Boom? I'm like, you. Not me. Oh, jump too fast. I forgot to tell you how I found my mama in there. Yeah. But back at the hookers, they was giving me money, buying me clothes. So one day I'm sitting on the porch and I met this girl. And she's cute. She wasn't no whore or nothing. And she had a nice little house and I rapped to her. She let me stay with her for a little bit. We became boyfriend and girlfriend and I wind up uh, getting her pregnant. So after I got her pregnant, the girls knew where to find me if they needed me. So the girls come down the street. Impella, where, you know, like the back window raised down. Yeah. So they come down there with an Impella with a big bow on it. What the hell are you driving around with a bow on it? So they pulled up in front, smiling and laughing. Boom, come here. I said, what? You see, I'm with my girlfriend. We sorry. We just want to give him his gift. The car? They said, yeah. That brought me up. Oh, man. Oh, shit. They come over. You crying to hell? No, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they believe y'all bought me a car with y'all money. Because y'all do got minds, right? They said, yeah. You be to start being mean. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'll take the car. I never seen them again after that that they gave me the car because... The girl I was going with, well, she, I didn't know that she knew my sister. Mm. They lived right next door to us. My, my, my mother, brother, sister, everybody lived there, and I never knew it. And I've been staying with her for almost like three months. So, you know, she tell me that she going to the party next door. You want to come? I said, I really don't like being out. She said, oh, come on, baby. Don't you love me? I'm like, don't wear that out. But yeah, I go with you. So I go over there. The girl opened the door. Damn, she looked for me. I don't say nothing. And I sit in there. I got my hair done, my nails done. I'm sharper than them. Mm. So I go in there and sit down. And uh, later I found out that her name was Etna. Etna. I got a sister named that. Then here come my sister Louise down the stairs. Now I knew her when I was. Oh, wait a minute, that's Louise. <gasps> so I tried to duck down Louise, talking about, boom, what the hell? 
did you run away again? I said, no, I've been out for a year or so. She said, nobody told us. Said, Y'all didn't leave no new number or nothing. They gave me the old address over on Continental. I didn't know that y'all live here on Sheridan because I've been living next door to you. So, nah, that's Michelle's place next door. I said, yeah. I've been living with her. <laughs> but she prayed. I said, yeah. You <laughs> for the auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she told me where my mama was working at the White Castle up there. Top Hat, they call it back then, I think. It was Top Hat. I go up there on the boulevard in Jefferson. My mama in there working. I said, okay. I see her through the windows. Oh, my mama working too hard. So I go in there and I sit up at the counter. And she walked past me twice. Third time, she said, what you want to eat, boom? I'm like, you know who I am? Like I don't know my own kid. I'm like, I got facial hair and so forth now. <laughs> so I still know who you is, boy. What you want to eat? I'm not really hungry, but I take a shake. She made me a chocolate shake, my favorite. She asked me, do, do you know where we live? I said, yeah, right down there on Sheridan. So I go back to the house. She get all work. She talked to me and I explained to her. The people kicked me out. But I'm going to go join the Army. She said, what? I'm going to go join the Army, me and uh, my friends. I mean, y'all been to join us. It's about six of us. So, after my mother gave us the okay, we, uh, what did happen? Okay. Oh, I never did tell them that I was in. Mm. I just said, we think about joining the army. So when we did, we went to boot camp and all that shit, ATI. But I never told nobody. So when I came home, I came home and just plain blue jean, blue jean jacket, and a hat. I didn't wear my uniform home. I had two weeks off, so we go back to the city and uh, we bullshitting at the uh, some crane and Kirchhoff. They had a little bar right there. We go in there and we dancing. At that time, the Freaky Deke was out. Okay. Girls bagging up on them. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Maybe, <laughs> you know, I'm dancing. All of a sudden, pow. Nigga, did you just hit me? No, uh, Jeremy don't already walk behind him. He didn't know what was coming down to after the guy hit me, but he walked behind him. And I looked at him and said, man, you got a lot of balls. Man, you don't be doing that to my woman. Your woman was doing it to me. I'm still leaning against the bar. She done walked up to me and bagged it up. Man, I'll cut you. I said, what? You gonna do what? I'll cut you. Well, see, you bring in a knife. I'm packing. So I'm, oh, so you gonna shoot someone? Not unless you try to hurt, hurt me and harm me. Then I'm protecting myself. He was like, I guess he thought he was fast. Yeah. So, shoot. I got a drop holster. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he put the knife back up. A couple of days later, they popped that boy shot in the alley. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm like, damn. <laughs> and they come and arrest me. Like, what the hell? Hey, where you got? I'm right here. License to carry. I got general license. I'm still in the service. Somebody sent you a message on they the call, telephone. They called the service. And, of course, the master sergeant came over there to 1300 Bobin, talked to him and so forth. And they said, nah. He had a gun. He said, yeah, he likes to carry it. Prosecutor said, well, we're going to make an example out of this little nigga. 
And I can hear them out there talking. I'm in the cell, but I can still hear them. My little nigga. So, okay, so they say, come to me tomorrow. We will then offer you a deal. 3 to 15 for manslaughter and 2 for the gun if you take a cop. So I got license to carry this. Said, Where are you going for that? They don't know what to tell you. Service talked to him and said, hey, he been to re-up. Y'all been to take him? He said, well, we're going to keep him a little longer because we believe that we could get him to take a cop. I never did. I wound up going back into the service for another tour. They got pissed off. And later on, when I got out the service, they finally got me for, uh, well, they charged me with armed robbery, possession of a firearm during, during, during the commission of armed robbery. Hmm. It wasn't me. Even as today, they still got that crap in my record, but I wasn't about to tell that. That's my brother y'all picked out the picture of. Mm. So Pop came down there with my mom and said, you ain't going to tell it with me, is you? I said, man, you left that shit in my car, man. So they assuming that me. I didn't even know what they had until my lawyer said, yeah, they found the people ID in your, tr in your trunk. Only body had my car was Pop. It was in his name. So... I kept my mouth shut, went on and served the time. Yeah, how long you used that for? I, I served two for the gun. You got to do that flat. Yeah. And one in the, almost two years for the crime. Then they put me out on parole. When I got off parole, now, quick question. So when you was in the army, was you special forces? Because I seen something was saying that. Yeah. Vietnam, everybody was sent home, but you was sent back in on missions. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. They already yeah. having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Okay. All right. But I got pictures and so forth. I wish I'd have brought my army picture. I could have showed you. Yeah. <laughs> and paperwork. So, what you doing? Um, I always keep copies of everything because I don't trust y'all. I figure sooner or later y'all gonna kill me. Mm. They're like, why would you think us you we would do that? I said, because you trained us to do certain things. And we were supposed to get a job, but we didn't get the job. Why? They was already for no, nah, because we black. Mm. I I wanted to tell them that's why we all turned hitman. Cause y'all didn't <laughs> want to give us the job. So we're gonna make some money. Yeah. If you don't want to pay us what you want me to stop doing out here and pay me and I do it in there. So we're going to do it out here then. And we did. We made good money. 